If there was a way to make the great Monte Cristo sandwich better, well, I think we found it. A Monte Cristo is really, at heart, just a ham and cheese. Just. A ham and cheese cooked like French toast. Cheese, ham, dipped in egg thing, cooked, eaten. It's delicious. In fact, Young Chance says he almost orders it every time he sees it on the menu. But I ask myself, is it possible to improve on this most delicious of sandwiches? That, by the way, are perfect for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Late night doesn't matter. There's no appropriate time to have a Monte Cristo. So we're gonna do that today. We're gonna to add two layers of ham. One will be sliced ham, Black Forest, my fave. And the other, we're gonna try and do a little pulled pork tenderloin thing. And since I don't know how it's gonna work out, I got two ways to do it. Today is experimental day for our Monte Cristos. Let's attend to our pork by seasoning it first. These are two pork tenderloins. That's how they come. These two came in a package. I think it's a great deal. This is about eight bucks or something. You can do a lot of stuff with this. So one we're gonna cook on the grill. The other one we're gonna braise, cook in uh, liquid to get it all tender and perfect. But we're gonna season them both the same way. So into our little bowl will go the following. For me, the usual suspects. A little cayenne, okay, maybe more than a little some chili powder. These all for me work beautifully with pork. Dry oregano. And of course, kosher salt and pepper. We mix this. Breaking up the oregano. Nice. Ready? Let's give our pork a little avocado oil so everything sticks. Go to both sides. And the fat that's on here, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much okay with. So now we'll season both the same, quite aggressively. Pork is pretty bland, you know? It needs some love. And if it doesn't get it here, you know, where's it gonna get it? And this guy. And you remember that I said one will go on the grill and one will be braised in liquid to help it get super tender and pull a party, we hope. So let's do this. Let's take this guy, sorry. We're gonna take this guy, this one will go in the liquid. So I'm just gonna make life easier, cut them into little quarters. This one here. And then we want seasoning here on the ends that doesn't have any so and then we've got it on the board we can just soak it up that way take advantage of it of the spillage till you're good if you need more take more and we're great okay one for the pot one for the grill let's check out the pot first so this may or may not work. Right now I have no idea. This is about uh, three quarters of a bottle of Modelo Negro. Dark beer, smells amazing by itself, right? Oh yeah. An unnecessary ad could be that butter that I just put in. Not 100% sure. To give it a little extra, we'll put about a tablespoon of Worcestershire. And then for one special little interesting ad, we're gonna give it about a quarter of a teaspoon of liquid smoke that looks like this. That, a little mix. And now, in goes the pork. And this will come back to a boil. We want it really at a simmer when we put the lid on. These little medallions are just gonna live in here. You can see, as I turn this guy over here, the bottom side is already starting to go white, like pork, and this guy. We want a little bubble on this, not boiling, a little simmer, and then we put the lid on. <laughs> Violently. Violently. Just keep your eye on it. You don't want it to boil, because it'll get tough. 
You want it to simmer so it'll be tender, cooked through, and then fall apart. -y. Next, we throw this kid on the grill. There you have it. All right, it's not very exciting yet. Grill's on sort of medium-ish high. We want to cook it till it's between about 140 and 145. Then we're going to wrap it in foil with a little more beer, let it steam until tender, and then the magic happens. So you know the way I like to cook a steak on a grill. I turn it, I turn it, I turn it. Same thing here. I'll just keep going. So it's evenly cooked all the way through. I'm not gonna take that long. So when you get marks, give it a flip. When you get marks, give it a flip. Keep going, keep going. Check it with your instant read thermometer. Yank it just around 140. So here's our, uh, our, our, here's our little uh, braising experiment. They look good. A little more bubbling than I want. I'll turn it down a bit and check back in about 10, 15 minutes. I don't think garlic aioli is a traditional component of a Monte Cristo, but it's something that we use at Not Not Tacos a lot and now at Gray's quite a lot and it just enhances. So we're going to make a quick little bit of it to go on this uh, hopefully delicious sandwich. First, Japanese mayo, like that. Squeeze of oil, avocado, like that. Some fresh garlic. This would not be the time to throw in dried garlic crystals. And some minced parsley for color and deliciousness and max we mix. I cannot tell you the amazing difference this is going to make. Because it's going to. Oh, <laughs> I caught it. I cannot tell you how good this smells. This, this pork braising away. Oh. And this, our beautiful little tenderloin. Shall we take its temperature? Do you know, let me tell you something that your generation has missed out on. Your temperature being taken rectally. <laughs> Damn it. it. It was. <laughs> we really missed out. How sorry are you? It was a thing in my day. I'm not saying I enjoyed it. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Didn't you preface this I whole thing not. about something that we've missed out on? <laughs> All right. Here, look. Uh, the ambient temp right here. Was that, you can read that? 70 degrees? Yep. So in... We go, I can't read it. You tell me, what's it say? 101.6. We're not there. 102, 103. Not there. While that's finishing, while that's finishing, now we'll shred some Gruyere cheese that will be tremendous in this. It's pretty easy, just, well, do this. Using the large holes on a box grater, we shred. Gruyere. Is widely also known as Swiss cheese. It's a little more, oh, I don't know. I like it. You could use whatever. Look, you could use any kind of cheese you want, but I get the aroma of this right here. So it's a little bit more, say, oh, pungent, I think, than regular Swiss, which is what you want. I think by the time you, you French toast a size this sandwich with ham and you know, egg and blah, 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 whatever on the outside, you want a cheese that will stand up. And this one is gonna stand up. Okay? Okay. All we have to do now is wait for our two pieces of pork tenderloin to finish. Sorry, our five pieces. One on the grill and four in the little pot. All right, it's time. Uh, the tenderloin on the grill behind me is about 141-ish. These, I think I'm gonna give up on them, though we'll try just because. But here's how I want this to go down. I have a container here, AKA casserole dish. I'm gonna take some foil, AKA, foil. I guess foil, there's nothing else for it, right? And, and set it in here, like a, like, a, like, a, like a bed spread, no, like a, like a, I don't know, like a what? What is this? 
Anyway, into this, I was just only going to put the tenderloin from the grill, but I think now I want to try out these guys that were braising away. I don't know, they don't seem very tender. That's tender, that's not. I don't know if this is gonna work. But let's not just leave them like that. Let's put a little more beer in here to help the whole thing steam a bit. And now we'll close up our, our parcel. Like this, like this. Like this, we want this to be fairly snug. We leave it for 10 minutes. Then we deal with the pork, whatever condition it's in. Then we build our sandwiches. Pork's almost ready. We start with our little egg wash, batter, French toast sizing kind of thing. Eggs go in, go with three. And three tablespoons of cream. And you could use milk, but I like cream, so three tablespoons roughly of heavy cream. And we mix, sorry, and we beat. When that's done, it goes off to the side. We wipe, we deal with the pork. And here we are. So our pork, now a little rested, looks like this. Nope, this is not fucking working at all. This, on the other hand, is gorgeous. Look, I'm not scared to admit that this experiment did not work. The idea was to get it like a little shreddable, which it's, it's not really gonna do. Shit, let's take a look. That's pork, it's completely cooked. A bite. Yeah, fuck it, don't do that at all. That is dry as freaking toast. Gross. I may have to take a different tact than this. Let's check the tenderloin. Tenderloin, please. I mean, I know what to do if it doesn't work, but gosh. Oh, there you go. Look at that. Wow. So this now, this is the stuff. That's what we want. Yum. Can I have a bite of that? Mm. That's good. Okay, so do this. Shred this up. Forget the one in the beer. This is the one you want to do. F it. Maybe hands is easier. Just do it with your hands. This is going to be great. And when you've got it the way you want it, get back the broth from the one. Now, see, now we're making sense. Now I know why I did these shitty little chunks so I could end up with this delicious broth. Put all of this in here. Oh boy, look at that, Max. Push it down. Now this, we just leave. This will go into our sandwiches and make them oh amazing. Let's build. So here we go. We want a middle layer, so this is what we've got. We're going to start with the traditional ad of Dijon mustard on one piece. Spread this out. And don't be cheap. I mean, I always say that, but I spread all the way to the edges because if somebody takes a bite right here, I want to make sure they get a bite. A decent bite of the mustard. You feel the whole thing. Next, we're going to put a layer of our Gruyere cheese. A little bit. Some of this pulled tenderloin that's been living in this amazing broth that I made by accident. Well, now absolutely intentionally. Look at that. More here, all the way. You should smell this. <gasps> oh my God. And now you know you need cheese for glue. So a little more. Now this guy's gonna go on top. You know what's going on here, Max? More cheese? Actually, I'm gonna go another little bit of mustard. Come on on the top one. I want aioli on the bottom or on the top and mustard on the other side. Cheese. 
Ready for our more traditional ham or Black Forest ham? I don't know if I can do this. I don't know how this is going to come together, how I'm going to be able to hold all this in. Well, it's going to be a good experiment, isn't it? Oh, yeah. And if it's a freaking disaster, oh, I don't think it's going to be. Okay, garlic aioli goes next on this top piece right here. Goodness gracious. And for the glue, a little bit more cheese on top of this and then this. Now look, this is ridiculous, like this, so we will push it down. We will use what's known in the industry as the solid flat palm push. And the requisite hold for 10, 8, 6, 3, 1. And that's what you've got. Now look, you could pick this up and eat it by itself, but we're not going to do that because that's not what this is intended to be. So I will now push it off to the side and in comes the beaten egg with the cream. Here's the hard part, ladies and gentlemen, how I get all this in there and then onto the flat top without it falling apart. So here we go. As carefully as you can. In. And now you want to get it soaked well enough that it all gets in. So try and do the bottom. Turn it over to the top. And just as that's soaking, we're going to put some butter on the flat top and then bring it right over and put it on. And then you lift up your sandwich. On we go. Oh, goodness. We may have done something terrible here, ladies and gentlemen. We may have created a Frankenstein's monster of a Monte Cristo. What I can tell you is how it smells. And it smells insane. It smells like a Monte Cristo should. Yeah, that's going to be gorgeous. It's going to be gorgeous, but it's not there yet. And don't forget, we got to figure out how we do this and then the backside. And then, of course, what right now is the top. And when you need Max to move, you just say, Max, move. Let's turn it over. I'm not saying I'm not coming back. I'm just saying right now, I'm just turning over. Hello, sweetheart. That is a Monte Cristo. Right now, right now I want to get this part, the backside. So I'll go like this. So this is not easy because I have to hold this. There's not like Monte Cristo bookends that I can employ. I just have to stay here watching, making sure that nobody falls out, everything stays intact. Oh, watch it. It's oh. Like it's splitting at the bottom. Splitting? Move, move, quick, let me do this. Okay, come back. Look, you wouldn't need to do this in a normal Monte Cristo, but look right down on the top, Max. You know what I see? I see ham, I see garlic aioli, I see melting cheese. I see just a tremendous amount of gorgeousness. Okay, now here comes the hard part. I'm gonna bring it down. Cause I've got this beautifully. Look at the pork coming out. Let me shove that kid back in. You get in, get in. Nobody told you to leave. Now the hard part. Can I get color here? Why do I have to do this? Make my life miserable. So not a lot, just a little. Oh shit. shit, everything's going bad. This was a mistake. This is a terrible mistake. That's the best I can do. Oh my God, I think we've done okay here. Let's grab this kid. Come on, baby. And here we are. I gotta stop saying that. Look it, look it, look it. I don't know about you, Max, but maybe we cut it. And here we go. It's maybe the most delicious grilled cheese ever. Two kinds of pork, garlic aioli. And let's have a bite. Let's have a bite, holy shit. 
I don't know what could be wrong with this. Nothing could be wrong with this. Dijon, it's got that bite. The garlic aioli, you see the, the parsley green of it here. The pulled tenderloin, the black forest, just add that savory and smokiness of the black forest and then the French toast nonsense of the whole damn thing. Oh my God. So, maybe we overdid it with two layers. Maybe, make one. I would not leave out the garlic aioli. Hell, I wouldn't leave out both the meats. But thanks for being here, thanks for hanging out. And don't forget, we have the special limited edition this month only, Vote for Lewis t-shirt. It's below, 100% of the proceeds go to the San Diego Humane Society for their PAWS program. Feel good, help dogs and their owners. Here, make this. And as cool as this triple decker Monte Cristo is, Max wanted a single for the JPEG, so I do what he wants. I don't care, I'll do anything you want.